This video is the first of three videos that are going to discuss how to balance redox reactions. Uh, specifically, we'll be talking about redox half reactions, a skill you'll be using in later balancing activities, as well as balancing reactions under neutral conditions. Here's a list of the learning objectives for the video itself. We'll begin by refreshing you as to what a redox, redox reaction actually is. We'll then talk about the concept of redox half reactions. What does that mean and how is it useful for us? And last but not least, we'll take some time to talk about the first type of balancing, the easiest, which is balancing reactions in neutral conditions. Uh, we'll have a couple breaks throughout the process to talk about some examples and hopefully make what is a fairly ab or abstract idea a little bit clearer. So as I already said, we're going to begin our discussion with a quick recap of what redox and reduction oxidation really means. Uh, and the key term here is the idea of a transfer of electrons between atoms during a chemical reaction. And we can see that graphically shown in this diagram here. We've got our electron donor over here and our electron acceptor over here. It's going to donate this electron from its um, orbitals of electrons into the other one here. That process of donating electrons is known as oxidation. The elect atom or the molecule, I should say, that receives those electrons is undergoing the process of reduction. Oxidation requires the loss of electrons, which means an increase of positive charge. The gaining of electrons or reduction involves the um, the increase of negative charge and becoming a more negative substance. Now, the thing that is new for this kind of topic is the idea of balancing redox reactions, and that's what these next couple of videos are all about, uh, which means that not only now are we worried about making sure that atoms are conserved during chemical reactions, we also have to make sure that the electrons are conserved as well. So the number of electrons gained by reduction has to be the same as the number of electrons that are lost during oxidation. So this is what adds to the complexity of balancing redox reactions. We're now worried about two things to balance as opposed to just one. Now, as we've already applied in the videos, uh, we're going to be undergoing these redox reaction balancing in three different types. Uh, we balance them three different ways, and those different ways are based off of pH. Uh, reactions under neutral conditions, we're going to be talking about in this video here. Uh, these are the very simple ones. Well, next video, we'll talk about balancing reactions under acidic conditions, which requires different criteria. And last but not least, we'll talk about how to balance reactions under basic conditions. Now, again, all of this is referring back to the pH of the solution that you're dealing with, and we have a pH scale down here at the bottom, remembering that neutral denotes a pH of right around 7. Below 7 means they're increasingly acidic. This means we're going to have an excess of H plus ions available during the reaction and that'll be very important when we're balancing acidic um, reactions for redox. Increasingly alkaline or basic means we have an excess of the OH ion available to us and just like in acids this will be very valuable for us when we're balancing basic reactions. But for today, we're going to focus on reactions right here in the neutral part of the spectrum. So the major tool we use when balancing redox reactions are what are known as half reactions. So to help balance a redox reaction, we separate the reduction and the oxidation parts of the reactions and write them separately. And these separate half or these separate things are referred to as half reactions. What this allows us to see is the number of electrons that are released during oxidation and the number of electrons that are used during reduction, and it helps us to balance these. So not only will we see the atoms and make sure that they're balanced, but by seeing the separate half reactions, we'll see the numbers of electrons in each case, and that'll allow us to balance those as well. We'll put everything back together at the end of the reaction once we've balanced everything, and we should end up with a balanced chemical reaction. To do this, however, we need to be able to identify what elements are being oxidized and what elements are being reduced by first assigning oxidation numbers to all individual atoms. So instead of talking about this uh, hypothetically, I think the best way to explain this process of writing uh, oxidation and reduction half reactions uh, is simply to actually give it a try. So what we're going to do here with this particular reaction is start by assigning oxidation numbers. I'm not going to go through the steps to do this. There is another video on that. Uh, but if this does seem mysterious, I'd pause the video now and go back and check that out. Anyway, the oxidation number for copper is plus one. Iron in this case is an element, so its oxidation state is zero. Copper ends up being zero because it's an element, and iron in this case ends up being plus three because uh, it's a monoatomic ion.
So again, we have to identify what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Well, the pairings are these. Iron 0 turns into iron plus 3, and copper plus 1 turns into copper 0. Iron goes up in charge, that is oxidation. Copper goes down in charge, becomes more negative, that means it is reduction. So what I like to do when I'm balancing these reactions is then write a place underneath for reduc reduction and oxidation. You're going to leave spaces here because later on we're going to use this space in order to work with these reactions. Uh, our oxidation reaction started with iron metal, the solid. It then broke down to make iron, the ion, plus three. And to do that, it must have lost three electrons in the process. So the three electrons that came out are now shown here separately. In the reduction reaction, we started with the copper plus one ion. That turned into the copper zero element, which means it must have gained one more electron and then turned into the element copper. That made the charge go from positive one back to a charge of zero. So this is our oxidation half reaction and this is our reduction half reaction. What you'll note is that actually, the, hopefully you'll see this, the format is always the same. In oxidation, we always have electrons as the product of the reaction. And in reduction, we always have electrons as the reactant. So here's a second example. Uh, I very strongly encourage you to take a moment, pause the video, uh, see if you can assign your oxidation states, write the separate half reactions, and then we'll go over the answers in a minute. So really quickly, I've taken the time to get the uh, half reactions written out. I started by assigning my oxidation states. I then picked what was being reduced and oxides, oxidized using my Leo says Ger uh, analogy there. Last but not least, I wrote them as separate reactions. I took the elements that were being oxidized and wrote them on one line, and the elements that were being reduced and wrote them on a separate. Uh, so again, this is our process. And what I want you to notice, looking ahead a little bit, is that this oxidation process produces two electrons, while this reduction process uh, uses up three of them. And this is where we'll be interested in balancing these later on down the road when we're dealing with acidic and basic conditions. Uh, for now, however, we're not super duper worried about this. So to wrap things up then, um, the last thing we'll talk about is balancing these redox reactions under neutral conditions. So again, if you recall from earlier in the chapter, uh, to balance a redox reaction, we have to balance it for atoms first, and then we have to balance it for numbers of electrons second. And those uh, half reactions are going to be a tool that we can use to do that. Now when we're dealing with acidic and basic conditions in later videos, this will require a couple things. First of all, we're going to need a new process and a new set of rules for balancing. It is not the same kind of balancing you did before. In some ways it's more difficult, in other ways it's actually easier. It's also going to require the addition of H plus ions, OH minus ions, and H2O ions. These are all atoms that are available, or all compounds that are available during the reaction process from our solvent, and this solvent stuff is going to become involved in the actual balancing process. It's going to allow us to balance elements while at the same time balancing our electrons. The great news is that in neutral conditions, and that's really what we're focusing on today, the balancing that we're going to do for neutral reactions is exactly the same as the balancing you've done all year long. There's really nothing different. And the reason this is, is that we cannot balance a chemical reaction in any way other than that which balances the atoms. Because we're not introducing any new elements, there's no different ways to combine this. They only have one possible answer. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is without the addition of other stuff like this, like we deal with in acidic and basic, there's really no possible way to get another answer. So I'm not going to take the time to go over some examples with balancing neutral reactions. Again, it's something you guys have been doing a lot all along, and all the same rules apply. Uh, but at this stage in the game, here's what you should be able to do. Uh, you should be able to identify when you're dealing with a redox reaction. You should be able to determine the oxidation states of each individual atom in that. And you should be able to determine what element is being oxidized or reduced. This is all from old videos. What we talked about today is what's listed down here. You should now be able to write the reduction and oxidation half reactions as well as balance those redox reactions under neutral conditions, uh, which again, nothing really new going on here. It's just the same kind of balancing you've been doing all along. We'll get to the more unique and interesting balancing stuff 
when you watch the video on acidic balancing and basic balancing.